natural resources. With our projects such as Surface, we support Greener Europe and moreover, in our new program, in line with the European framework, we will also continue supporting Greener Europe. And therefore, I would like to briefly uh, introduce uh, our new program that we are currently working on. It's the new Interreg Central Europe program for the years 2021 to 2027. And as I mentioned, Green Europe uh, will continue to be one of our program priorities. And therefore, of course, we encourage you and would be really glad to see also projects, ideas from your side in our new program. Uh, the new Interreg Central Europe program is currently planned to kick off in mid uh, 2021. And of course, first calls for the project proposals uh, is expected, are expected to be launched uh, soon after the program start. Uh, in this regard, we invite you uh, to follow our program webpage on the updates on this program development. And to conclude this short presentation, once again, uh, I congratulate you and I wish you a successful final conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you. Um, I might include these details, very interesting details on the new call um, from Interreg Central Europe um, in the follow-up that, that we will be sending out to this um, webinar and conference to the participants. And coming back to the uh, surface project, uh, I said in the beginning, I'm representing the consortium. Um, a lot of some partners will be uh, also presenting today, but to show you who else is here in the back that, um, I don't know why there is a red line, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but you can see here the picture of our kickoff meeting here in Tarot two years ago with all the partners. Where are we from? Um, uh, we are a very nice mixture of, of countries from uh, throughout Central Europe, from Austria, Slovenia, Italy, Germany, Poland, Hungary, Croatia, Belgium and the Czech Republic. And all the partners are active in the field of waste prevention or waste management. Um, yes, that's, that's uh, our map. And my last slide is to just give a general play, frame uh, on the goals um, that was the motivation be behind our action throughout the last three years. Um, it was setting up multi-stakeholder based smart reuse parks. My colleague will give a detailed insight on that name or what is behind the smart reuse park in a minute. Um, but supporting with this, um, this setting up supports the prolonging of product lifetimes uh, via repair and reuse activities. And at the same time, it supports the European goals uh, also of the um, Circular Economy um, Act on waste prevention, energy and resource efficiency, the creation of green jobs and fostering regional added values. More information can be found on our um, website, the project website. Um, but this would have been from my side uh, the very short introduction and now I would like to give the floor to Christian Leonhardsberger from the Waste Management Association and, and company ZAC from Germany. Christian, I will stop sharing my screen now and you can try to start sharing yours. Oh, so it looks good. Does it work? It's not the presentation mode, it's the, um, now it's the presentation mode. Perfect, thank you. Yes, looks good. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, welcome also from my side here from uh, Kempten in Germany. Uh, thank you, Maria, for the introduction and also for the uh, first uh, overview of the project. And now it's my turn to somehow explain and, and describe more in detail the, our smart reuse bug concept that we have developed or even uh, set up and implemented in the last three years. And the structure of my presentation is, uh, first of all, I want to give you a brief overview why 
we are talking about smart to use park. Uh, a little bit, some words about the history coming to the project. And then I want to span this art from, uh, from theory, what the smart to use park is, what are the characteristics and so on, uh, to the coming to the practice. So how we try to set a smart reuse pack up and how we run the smart reuse pack. And as you have seen in the agenda, we also have then five uh, pilot actions and partners who present uh, how they implemented their smart reuse pack. So starting with this drawing, and this was made more than five years ago, uh, it was uh, made during a Central Europe conference in Vienna, uh, already uh, for the previous project, uh, the previous project called Zerik. Maybe there are also some participants with us uh, who remember this project. And um, also there, we already had the goal to extend the product lifetime. So if you work in the waste management or in a waste collection center, you might have seen that there are coming products they have not ever even reached the product lifetime uh, so there is a great need to try to uh, prolong this product lifetime in order to save energy save resources and so on so this is the ecological uh, need uh, i've mentioned already the Project Zerek uh, that was carried out 2011 to 2014, uh, where I think it was even the half of the partnership was also particip uh, participating already uh, within this project. And there we tried to get good things and good items that have uh, ended or landed in the, in the waste regime to get it out uh, and do the preparation for use and uh, sell it again. So to create some networks between waste management and socio-economic enterprises. So then years went by and the new program was coming and so we were thinking about the uh, uh, previous project and then I think we can even mention Bertolt Schleich. He came up with this term smart reuse bug. And uh, who knows Bertolt Schleich is one of the most uh, important, per uh, one of the most important persons in Austria to uh, work for reuse and waste prevention since years. And uh, yeah, he created also this term. Uh, and uh, I will explain what it means also in a few seconds. So there was also, uh, when we talk about needs, there was also the need to have a more uh, innovative approach uh, compared to, to the Zarek project. And uh, of course, there's also a, a legal need. All, uh, of course, you know already very well this uh, waste hierarchy uh with these five uh, measures and the first two priorities uh here you can already find uh, very prominently uh also reuse and reuse and repair measures uh so reuse is can be outside the waste regime but it's also as i've explained before uh within the waste regime uh and very prominently that you can take it out and prepare it for use. Um, so now it's time to show you the our definition, how we would uh, uh, describe uh, a smart reuse park. And we described it as a flexible and modular combination of reuse oriented services located in visible and life able urban areas embedded into urban waste prevention strategies. So, and more or less, it's it. So what a smart reuse pack should be is a, a 
an area, a site uh, where more than one uh, activities or services are provided. So below you see a, a certain list what it could be, but I will talk about uh, services and activities later on more in detail, but that's quite a big range uh, within reuse and repair and sharing economy and so on. Um, and this all could take place within this uh, smart reuse park. Maybe also uh, short, uh, uh, some words about this waste prevention strategies. Um, most of you might also know that European countries should also uh, establish waste prevention plans. Um, this is done periodically, I think every five, six or seven years. And this is also done sometimes from uh, provinces on the provincial level. But then also the city of Graz in Austria started as first uh, to carry out also a waste prevention strategy for the city of Graz. And we believe that um, reuse or um, all these uh, waste prevention strategies uh, related to reuse uh, should be also integrated in these waste prevention strategies to have uh, somehow a political uh, power also behind this uh, smart reuse park. During the project, we discussed also a lot about um, criteria uh, and, and the quality scheme. So in order if some a region or a city calls itself a smart reuse park, so there should be at least some minimum criteria uh, a smart reuse park should fulfill. And um, the most important things are that there should be at least five different uh, reuse and repair services. And also there should be three different actors. I will also talk about actors later. And some further criteria are social, economic and environmental impact of these actors and services. So if you are thinking about incorporating or taking up some, some new activities, you should always think about their social, economic and environmental impact, so the sustainable impact. I've mentioned already the, the high range of uh, activities. Uh, of course, as we know, reuse and repair has also a high potential for creating new or green jobs. Um, then we also said that it, we, should, we don't want to exclude someone from this reuse park services. Uh, everyone should have access to it. And in my point of view, also uh, to raise awareness is very important. So if we want to bring this sustainable lifestyle to, to the citizens, uh, we also have to address pupils or even adults with educating or uh, uh, bringing them some events where they can learn about reuse. Um, we also, as, as we were nine partners uh, all over Central Europe uh, with very different uh, uh, conditions, so we found that there are uh, three different approaches what a park could be. When we started the project, it was not um, clear, even within the partnership, what does it mean a park? And so uh, we, we say also here, it's very flexible uh, and depending on the conditions, like we see here in, in Germany, from ZAC or the ATM in Tyrol, um, there uh, the companies and project partners are operating for 48 or 104 municipalities. So it's clear that also this smart use park also covers the whole area. But even in CMF from Vicenza, 
choose this approach with uh, this region wide uh, park definition. But also, we have partners who define the function urban area uh, for the city, like in Ljubljana, like Tsibiutas or PZN for Budapest. Uh, and you will also see later on this presentation from the partner of Turun. A park could also be uh, a premise, a building, uh, like here. It was a former um, agricultural estate, and there the buildings are serving for uh, for workshops, for selling reusable goods, and so on. So now I want to give a short and brief overview about the different services we have uh, found during these three years and that have been also applied. Of course, it's reuse uh, related services to collect uh, reusable things at the waste collection center or you use a reuse box that is given to the citizens and they can collect at home and bring it to collection points. Of course, there is uh, the preparation for reuse where you clean, test, uh, or make small repair until you bring it to the reuse uh, shops. Then there is also a great variety of, of repair services or activities, depending mainly on your own skills or depending on uh, the problem you have. If you're very well uh, skilled, you can even rent the rooms with, with machines and tools and uh, in, uh, for carpenters or sewing machines where you repair some furniture or clothes. Um, very prominent and very uh, strong movement is also this repair cafe movement uh, where you get some instruction from uh, experts they help you to repair your things and there's also a good chance that you offer a professional uh, repair network or via a repair guide for instance that the citizens and the people uh, get some information where they can bring their things to be repaired. Within the last years, also the sharing economy is strongly rising. Uh, so you can borrow and rent uh, several things from machines, tools, uh, books or everything. So you don't have to own it. You can also use it. Uh, here you can also see a shared open space or you can also do car sharing, etc. Further, Services might be uh, upcycling, fabrication laboratories, food sharing and saving, uh, as well as events and educational program. Uh, on the left side, you see a picture from the yearly reuse conference in Graz. Uh, yes, some few words about the actors within a smart reuse pack you see that i have mentioned that within a smart reuse pack you should have three at least three actors and uh, no matter where they are coming from could be associations from waste management associations uh, social economic enterprises private profit from the society or private non-profit um, yeah it, we believe that uh, the more actors you have, the more stable it is and you, the more uh, activities, services you could provide. This is only an idea how you can structure and organize uh, your smart reuse bug. As my time is running out, I also want to spend some few words about how to set up a smart reuse bug, as my title of the presentation is about. Uh, and here you can see some tools we have also established during Surface and these tools will be presented more in detail on Thursday during the second webinar. And 
here I just want to highlight that it is very important at the beginning that you have a clear picture and an overview of what you have in your portrait region or area. Uh, so you can make this uh, decision matrix or cooperation matrix to see how are the conditions, uh, which actors you have already, and then it's good to get in contact with, with your actors and stakeholders and commonly develop the goal. Then we also prepared a template for the action plan where we described step by step the setup phase and also implementation phase, also very important, um, like also for surface or each bigger project, it's good to have a good project or action plan. So all these tools are available and can be also asked from the partnership. And also a very good advice from our side would be to, to formalize the cooperation. So we also created a collaboration agreement. It is a template where you can describe also how you want to collaborate within the smart to use book to get all these actors together also in terms of finances and so on. And finally, as it was also in, the, to make it visible, was also in the definition already. Here you see some examples, but they will also follow later on uh, how you can do it. And like here in Austria, they created this normal platform in here in Kempton. It's called Zack Marktplatz, where also all services and actors are displayed, and also here in Ljubljana. So this was a very fast and short introduction to uh, setting up a smart reuse park and also what it is. I hope I could give a good overview. Uh, and if there are still questions, you can even ask uh, in the chat or you have here my contact details for any questions. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. <clears throat> I think this was a perfect overview and uh, also perfect introduction for the um, um, presentations that will now follow. Johannes, could you please start sharing your screen to um, present the Smart Reuse Park, the, the pilot action from Austria. Um, Johannes is the project manager here at the Waste Management Association, Mitaro, and uh, he will present now the, the details uh, of our platform. Hannes, can you start sharing your screen? And maybe also unmute yourself. Perfect, I see it's starting. Mm -hmm. And also just as a, um, as a hint for the participants, um, you might have seen that the chat function, it works as a general uh, chat, but you can also write personal messages uh, to every participant in, in this meeting. So for example, you can also uh, ask Christian Leonhardsberger directly a question there or every presenter that follows now. And also because there was a question at the beginning, um, why this is recorded. Um, it's on the one hand for documentation purposes, but at the same time, we will upload this video on the uh, project YouTube channel, just to let you know, but you will receive a follow-up email with this information as well. So Hannes, the floor is yours. Okay, can you see my desktop? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. super. <clears throat> okay, like uh, Christian mentioned, I will continue with the presentation of our Smart Reuse Park here in Austria. Um, we are located in the center of Tyrol, in the middle of the huge mountains. So we have a population from 400,000, almost 400,000 people. We have 104 communities. The biggest is Innsbruck with 150,000 inhabitants and we have almost 170,000 private homes in our functional urban area in our region here in Tyrol. Um, our aim to develop the Smart Reuse Park was a virtual space. Since in the area here we have already a lot of 
stakeholders and a lot of um, small and medium enterprises as well as social economic uh, partners we don't want it to make uh, to to make one more of these of these shops stores or of this um, kind of um, businesses we wanted to show what's already here so our aim was to make a virtual space um, for promoting and making visible all the stuff that's already going on here in our region so since a lot of home pages and virtual platforms of the social economic enterprises here in the area was from maybe the 19th the 1990s so a little bit old school um, our aim was to make a brand new platform for all this um, state-of-the-art mobile phones smartphones tablets and whatever in future will be following so our aim is to make a platform that's totally mobile and totally for the younger generation um, the main thing of our platform is the map like you can see here every stakeholder that got to do something with repair reuse second hand is marked with this location pin here um, ah, and i need to tell normal is a dialect word and means can you use it one more time and that's our main mission our main um, mission statement use it one more time so here is all the stakeholders marked where you can use stuff one more time buy stuff that's already used and the more lightly uh, location pins that are events like second hand markets or this one would be a repair cafe um, so all things that's just an event are more bright and the other ones are um, fixed locations for repair upcycling and reuse so you can choose whatever you like to do with your second hand stuff swapping sharing donating passing on buy there is also um, locations for education and know-how exchange borrowing renting and also repairing upcycling yeah so this is the main thing this map um, our approach was compared to booking.com and to um, for example um, yeah like booking.com they don't even own an own hotel um, they just share it and communicate it so we have a lot of actors involved like i told a lot of activities going on already like collection preparation sale repair rental upcycling and we wanted to support it make it visible make a network for all of these actions um, our SRP, yeah, like I told, the visibility is in the focus, the networking, and um, the operation is we have a reuse manager for the content and coordination. We have a programmer that keeps the platform online, and we have a social media manager to keep the virtual world on date. Yeah, we have a lot of activities, like I told, several repair cafes, reuse shops, rental shops, food sharing initiatives, fab labs, open workshops. And on the picture here, you see the repair cafe, how it is happening here in Tirol. And one, one major step was here at the IKB, one of our partners in Innsbruck. They, um, they have been... Um, making possible the reuse bike bicycle collection so uh, used bikes can be um, put at this re reuse corner at the local recycling facility 
Um, I think this is easy to copy paste in the whole region. And it's almost no space and almost no money for this for this pilot action. Yeah, as I mentioned, website platform is important, social media is important, um, posters at the recycling bin, and also we make a cinema promotional spot um, to get the normal idea into the minds of the Tyrolean uh, popularity. And the next steps are take cooperation forward, more partners, more actors, more actions, enlarge the radius of the platform. We already um, have contact with South Tyrol, Italy, Germany, and start a bigger awareness rising campaign like cinema, advertising, and lifetime magazines. And the networking events should be um, growing, and there should be more than two or three in the year, maybe. Um, or three month one workshop for all the stakeholders. Thank Thanks. you for your attention. Thanks, Hannes. Um, thanks for giving the insight and into this example of a virtual space located Smart Reviews Park. Yeah. Next, uh, Agnieszka Kieper, the project uh, manager from our Polish partner, will present details on their Smart Reviews Park in Poland. Agnieszka, would you uh, start sharing your screen, please? Yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone. Agnieszka is from um, Kujawsko Pomorski uh, in uh, in Poland, and we are looking right. forward to your presentation. Thank you so much. So yeah, how Maria said, I'm project partner from Poland, from Marshall Office of Kujawsko Pomorskie Region. I'm gonna to present various point which was uh, created in Poland as a part of Surface project. Uh, our reuse point is located in Torun, one of two centers of uh, urban functional areas uh, of Bydgoszcz and Torun, which is uh, located in the Kujawsko-Pomorskie region. Uh, the point was launched uh, last year in November under the name Repair Cafe Stania Reuse Point. In order to launch that reuse point, we have announced an uh, offer inquiry. The best offer was prepared by the Tilia Association, which became the operator of our reuse point. Tilia Association is a, a non-governmental organization. Uh, they are involved in multitask environmental activities and create even their own educational programs and actions by teaching ecological behavior. Uh, their task was to create, launch, and carry out activities at the point. Uh, as part of creating various points, they have separated the staff from their uh, organizational structure and has allocated a workshop room with a space for uh, storing items. Uh, all activities carried out in various bond are related to promote circular economy and are contributed to the sustainable um, development. Uh, for example, we are collating items like small furniture, ceramic, bicycles, toys, sport equipment, tools, etc. And if it is needed, we of course repair them and then selling them for a symbolic fee. Uh, income is intended uh, for maintaining the reuse pond, for example, for costs such as uh, utilities, salaries, repair materials. And despite collecting and selling um, items, we also organize repair and educational workshops, including upcycling and other events related mm -hmm. to running the reuse pond. Uh, the reuse point is open twice a week and is available to everyone. Uh, anyone ca can come and participate in workshops. We can say that there is only one restriction that is um, that is restriction regard collecting items. We do not accept clothes, books, and electric and electronics. We decided that for such items we can organi organize thematic flea markets. In the period from November to March, we uh, think uh, that about 700 kilogram things were collected. So uh, some of them have already found new owners. I think that we can say that about uh, 700 of these have been prevented. 
during this time also 17 uh, workshops took place for example bicycle and furniture repair workshop of upcycling carpentry and upholstery workshops how you can see on the picture um, uh, as you see in our repair cafe for the beginning we have focused at simple events uh, and uh, activities that we knew that the residents will enjoy and will be successful we hope that through these actions, residents will be more willing to take part in other activities uh, related to tourism, use, and maybe we will be able to increase their awareness. Due to the situation uh, that affected the whole world, I'm talking, of course, about coronavirus, we had to give up the meetings and workshops with residents. Uh, but as they say, every cloud has a silver lining. And that situation motivated us to make and publish instructional videos showing how to fix or do something step by step on your own uh, at home. Uh, videos are available on YouTube channel, YouTube, uh, channel and thanks to that we uh, will last for a long time. Uh, for the purpose of launching the Repair Cafe, uh, there was created a logo which is published on all materials um, as part of uh, as part of promoting our activities, we focus mainly on mass media. So we can, uh, so we have created our website dedicated to our use point. There is also a page on the Facebook where all workshops and even events organized within various points are announced. And what is more, we also promoted our activities via radio spots. Um, and what about future? At the moment, um, at the moment, uh, in the near future, we're thinking about resuming uh, the organization of stationary workshops because life and general functioning are slowly coming back to normal. Uh, it's definitely the first thing. And then we think about further development and extending the offer with a new events, but everything step by step. Thank you very much. Thank you, Agnieszka. Uh, you're perfect in time. And um, next one would be uh, from Germany, Claudia Meyer, who um, presents to us the characteristics of the Smart Reuse Park in, in the German region. Uh, Claudia, would you uh, please start sharing your screen? Yes, I can see. Perfect. Looking good. Yes, perfect. The only thing is I cannot hear you. Yes, hello, oh, everybody. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Claudia. Thank you so much. And I say hello to everybody. Now, our SRP is located in beautiful Algoy, which is between Austria and Switzerland, very close to Lake. Constance and the function urban area of our FUA, of our SRP in Kempten, is identical with the sphere of action of the Joint Waste Management Authority of Kempten. We have 48 municipalities and uh, 306,000 inhabitants. ZAC is the head and leading organization those ZAC manage, manages and supports the SRP development. Some activities and services are offered directly from ZAC, like collection of reusable goods, preparation for reuse and selling in their stores. In certain cases where ZAC is not running the activities itself, ZAC holds a share or giving funds to actors like Unternehmen Chance in Lindau and Lindenberg, Campodium, and so on. For the remaining activities, there is an informal cooperation with implementing actors, social second hand shops, repair cafes, food share, and unpacked shops. This slide is a share of actors in our SRP and that the biggest group is represented the private profit sector that is due to the number of professional repair companies. 
you see also at the next slide. Now you can see our other activities and services in our SRP. We have eight reuse collecting point, points, uh, 13 reuse shops or centers, repair cafes, a fab lab, uh, two food sharing initiatives, one open workshop, two rental shops, and 43 professional repair companies and uh, online platform, it means Zack Marketplace. Nothing works without public relation. At Zack, we serve different publicity measures. And you see, we have an online platform, we have posters, different flyers from our Zack box and our marketplace. We have uh, videos, TV spots, Facebook posts uh, by or by Instagram, panel discussions during future cinema, articles in Zack journal, uh, our stand at the Festwoche and uh, a lot of articles in press. Now we are proud that two weeks ago our new recycling center with a second hand store in Sonthofen is finally been opened. 4.8 euros were invested. Aimed Eight employees are employed in the used goods department store and around 10 employees are employed at the recycling depot and the waste transfer station. And I'm very proud to say already in the first days we could see a high visitor frequency. Of course, we also look to the future and want to expand our measures, attract new players and optimize previous actions. Thanks to the positive feedback from our citizens and the will of politics, we continue to feel motivated and look forward to further challenges. Thanks, that was my presentation. Thanks of all. Perfect. Thanks, Claudia. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> it's very good keeping the time. Thanks a lot. I see. Um, first of all, I would like to ask Marina, our Italian partner, uh, to, to start sharing her screen and giving us the insight um, into the Smart Reuse Park of Vicenza. Just one comment. I see that a lot of uh, questions are, are slowly coming into our Zoom chat just to uh, remind you, we will collect these questions and um, answer them in the Q&A session um, then at the end. But uh, it's great that there's a lot of interest into the presentations. So Marina, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. A short presentation of the Smart Reuse Park in Vicenza. Um, Let's see if it works. <laughs> Just a second. I think you have to start. We start again. We, we lost your screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, screen. Yeah, okay, it's starting. Perfect. Sorry for. No worries. Seconds lost. Yes, it so, should be working now. Welcome to Vicenza. <laughs> A short presentation of Cooperativa Insieme, that is the partner number five of Surface Project. Uh, we are a social cooperative and working uh, since 1917 in circular economy and in the reduction and prevention of waste. The Smart Reuse Park of Vicenza is, as you can see, in the northeast part of Italy. Uh, some figures in the right side of the slide that you can see. Uh, as you can see, it is one of the richest and industrialized Italian provinces, but it is very fragmented in terms of, of waste management companies. As you can see, we have 10 waste management companies in a province like this. 
So the Smart Reuse Park in Vicenza is for sure a, a physical area. This is the headquarter of uh, Cooperativa Insieme. Uh, but it is also a virtual space because, as uh, Christian mentioned before, we tried to be physical but also networking and, um, and virtual uh, connected to other subjects all around the province of Vicenza. Uh, we lead four shops all around province, uh, second-hand shops, and we uh, manage two plans of preparation for reuse. And above all, during COVID, uh, we focused on the online market. These are the actors or the, ma the main st stakeholders of the Smart Reuse Park, as you can see, in the gray spots, uh, we have the, um, the advisory board of our Smart Reuse Park that are the experts helping us to develop uh, the Smart Reuse Park all around the province, that are associations among uh, which Lega Ambiente is one of them, helping us to develop the Smart Reuse Park. And then for sure, the public sector, the municipality of Vicenza, that is the capital city of the province, and then the main waste management company of the province and the one managing the waste of the capital city of the province. Our twinning partner, as you can see, it's another waste management company coming from another city of the same region of Vicenza, uh, which name is Contarina. As you can see, we have a lot of stakeholders and actors, and we, with every one of them, we try to uh, develop activities within surface project. In the green spots, all the, level, the levels in which we have to be very active uh, to develop a coordinated uh, plan of uh, prevention and reduction of waste through reuse and preparation for reuse. A picture, a picture um, describing the sort of connection, collaborations that we have with all the stakeholders. As you can see, the citizenship is the box in which we work. They are the main donors, the main customers, and the ideal owners of the Smart Reuse Park. And every activity we do is intended in this uh, way that the citizens uh, are the owners of the Smart Reuse Park. Uh, as you can see, we work with the public sector with tenders, obviously, but we are always looking for public-private partnerships that we think uh, are the strongest tool to develop a coordinated strategy on the environmental matters. Um, Current and future activities, uh, we use this table that we defined within the surface project. As you can see in the um, reuse activities related to waste prevention, so we are in the first level of hierarchy, uh, we developed these activities. Some of them are already existing. Some of them are planned in the short, medium term. Uh, the picture is about a colleague of mine. Um, this is a video, a, um, a Facebook and Instagram uh, video that uh, Anna, uh, my colleague, made to teach the people how to recognize good quality shoes, second-hand shoes. Talking about preparation for reuse, as you can see, uh, this is the, uh, the core business of Cooperativa Insieme and of our uh, Smart Reuse Park. All the, uh, uh, all the acti activities shown are already existing. We are uh, quite uh, rich because we uh, manage two preparation for reuse centers. We are talking about uh, uh, the first one is 900 square meters and this is the picture of it. And the other one is 500 square meters, more or less. And then we uh, manage four second-hand shops, 
uh, and uh, now, up to now, a very strong uh, e-commerce market. Uh, as you can see, the uh, last uh, activity is the preparation for a use collection uh, in the waste collection centers. This is a model we fulfill and we look for every time we win a tender in which we are able to manage a collection center. One minute, okay. Marina. <laughs> About the education and training, you can see some activities we are already not running or planning. And the last part, introducing the PR and communication part, talking about the events in which we invest a lot. So technical or political events, a lot of trainings for employees to be updated on the procedures for reuse and preparation for reuse, but above all, a lot of activities of communication for the people, for the citizens. So some picture, some provisional figures uh, we are preparing for the final um, infographics of Surface project, some pictures of parties on the collection centers we manage, like this, Concerts in the reuse uh, shop, meetings, uh, conferences, uh, and uh, similars in our conference room, and a lot, a lot of events, public events for citizens. These are all flyers of the events during the year. Last thing, we really think that environment and social go together, so we keep on developing activities promoting this combination. And thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Marina, uh, for giving us this detailed insight. Um, we are more or less very good in time, but um, I would like to, to ask our last speaker um, in the first half uh, of this webinar. Um, it's um, Peter Grapak from uh, Hungary, based Solzen. Peter, I would like to ask you to share your screen. Yes, I can see. It's yes, can thing. you see it? Can you perfect. hear me? Everything is okay? Everything perfect. The floor is yours, Peter. Uh, I try also try to st uh, start video. Can you see me even? Okay, great. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to give you a short introduction of the Hungarian Smart Reuse Park that we have developed together uh, with our partner here in Hungary. Uh, the FUA is, is a functional urban area, which is already uh, presented by Christian. This is the area where, which is the uh, affecting or, or uh, uh, the area where the citizens are living that could contribute or to work or to uh, cooperate uh, with the Smart Reuse Park. So Budapest is well known, you know, uh, our partner within this development or this work cooperation is the Metropolitan Public Domain Maintenance PS in Hungary at SKF. They are responsible for the municipal waste collection uh, and management of uh, the Budapest. Uh, they serve 830,000 households, which means almost 2 million uh, inhabitants and uh, there are other 20,000 legal bodies that are served. They also own the uh, one and only Hungarian municipal solid based uh, incinerator in Hungary, the annual capacity of 400 uh, kilotons. Uh, they also have got uh, 16 waste yards where people, citizens can bring uh, their uh, waste. And also they have got uh, 400 curbside collection for uh, uh, selective uh, waste, uh, packaging waste collection. And also they operate two landfills. What is interesting from uh, reuse aspect is that they have got two awareness raising reuse centers. Um, what you can see here in the picture, uh, sorry, going back. Uh, this uh, is, uh, you can see on the map, uh, that it's quite not an unfavored location uh, in the in the map or the, the area of Budapest um, is more or less on the on the outer uh, downtown uh, city of Budapest. Uh, they uh, have got such uh, main uh, dedicated aims like uh, uh, acting as a reuse center, also acting uh, as an educational center, and they also act as a waste yard for a selective uh, and hazardous waste uh, municipal waste uh, collection. 
uh, what, how we started this cooperation at first. Uh, we identified the common goals uh, of FCAF and the project surface. What can we do together, which will be a win-win situation in both parties. And after that, we formalized these intentions uh, by a jointly signed cooperation agreement. Uh, within this agreement, our first technical step was to uh, identify the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats that could uh, be uh, listed within this cooperation. and. Uh, towards uh, the, the implementation of a smart reuse park. Uh, what I highlighted is for strengths is that uh, they already have educational activity and also uh, their activity uh, highly supported by their uh, uh, CSR, uh, corporate social responsibility and environmental responsibility. Uh, meanwhile, uh, opposite the uh, weakness was that there was no preparing for uh, reuse activity and also the curbside market waste correction where you might be familiar with uh, it is uh, uh, quite a big problem because when or once the municipal waste collector goes to this uh, 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 barky waste on the street they have been already um, let's say uh, excavated by, by uh, illegal uh, activities which uh, take off the useful precious materials out of these uh, products and, and items. Also, we have got identified some opportunities and also some threats that uh, could uh, endanger the realization in the future. Uh, one is uh, the lack of incentives uh, to run an SRP and also the legal background is not uh, so uh, clear uh, in Hungary uh, regarding the reuse activities. And there was one question among the uh, audience. Uh, somebody asked whether are there any differences between these uh, FUAs uh, I can say yes, it's a clear distinguish between the western part of Europe and eastern part of Europe and also uh, on the, the realization of smart reuse parks. Meanwhile, in uh, the western part of Europe there is a tradition and uh, there are generations who brought up by this uh, 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 culture of uh, reuse and environmental awareness. Meanwhile, in the eastern part of Europe is, is not as uh, relevant, so we have to start from a lower level of uh, environmental awareness. So we also identified that education is a key factor for an improved and efficient uh, reuse activity. And so the waste prevention in Hungary. Uh, also, uh, it uh, refers to the public relation as well and the, the geographical coverage that, it, that could increase the uh, uh, amount of prevented uh, waste by the more citizens can bring in their uh, products and could use this uh, infrastructure. And also uh, the environment is very uh, important because more added function could widening the range, range of overtaken products because uh, at this moment there is no preparing for reuse activity at this smart reuse park. So we have defined some uh, action plan uh, together with uh, this company and identify several uh, development possibilities. The management structure uh, is uh, quite new and quite simple uh, running these smart reuse parks because it incorporates into the big uh, company organization so there was no need to reorganization when they uh, implement and integrate this activity a few years ago uh, into their, uh, their main uh, scope and, and mission. And also what about financials? In general, uh, and I think it's also true for Western Europe that uh, re formal reuse activity is financial, not self-sustaining, su sustaining the strong corporate and social responsibility should motivate this uh, towards a uh, 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 sustainable uh, thing and also the integration of uh, social uh, and uh, social aspects, which means the uh, unemployment uh, people. So uh, we identify two financial sources. Uh, one is in, uh, the incomes from selling reusable products, which- One, one minute, Peter, okay. Thank you, okay. okay. Which really partially covers the cost and other external fundings, which at this moment there is no uh, such cause that could uh, subsidize or we could combine uh, to uh, uh, finance this uh, activity. So what we have already done, we, uh, put uh, emphasis on the uh, education and, and the raising awareness. So we uh, made several common appearance, appearances and cooperation, like Researchers' Night, you know, it's an EU initiative, as well as the European Week for Waste Reduction is the last November. 
every year and we also uh, organize workshops on reduced potentials and stakeholder knowledge and well we also uh, uh, organize together with the reuse related logistic training because logistics is one of the other issue when you run a smart reuse park how you can manage the things there and how you can get those things into this uh, facility uh, we also due to the covid situation we organized an online campaign namely be the ambassador of reuse which uh, where we targeted young generation and also we uh, composed uh, some surface story videos that you can find on surface uh, uh, youtube channel there are also uh, other some illustration of these activities and what are the future plans we uh, uh, aim to further cooperate on environment uh, awareness raising for um, waste prevention and also adoption of a discussion forum beyond the surface uh, and uh, we give you more uh, detailed information on thur uh, Thursday uh, presentation so and uh, well which is very important also the knowledge transfer to twinning partners uh, twinning actors when we can fertilize this idea and all of the know-how we gathered we collected that we can uh, give uh, them for a, a more effective realization. So, and of course, uh, as I mentioned, the financial is looking for further financing. So, um, thank you for your attention. This was my presentation. Thanks a lot, Peter. Very interesting. A lot of pictures, and I think we got a real good insight. And thanks also for um, already answering a first question out of the, of the general chat. Um, okay, looking at the time, we a bit behind schedule and might need to skip our um, our coffee break. Although I think I would like to give you two minutes, uh, everybody, so you can get new water, maybe get some fresh air and uh, two minutes. In the meantime, um, I will ask um, Juha to, to start sharing uh, his screen and maybe we, we test uh, again shortly your presentation and I have seen that also Sala in the meantime joined us um, perfect hi great to see you um, so you are in one minute we will then start with with your presentation but everybody shall get the, the quick possibility to to get some water it looks good would you like to try your microphone? Yes. Do you oh. hear me? Perfect. Okay, perfect. So one minute, okay? Then then okay. Uh, <laughs> we will start. So, we are back, five minutes behind our schedule, but I think this is okay. Juha, um, I will shortly would like to introduce you. Um, Juha Litikuya has been an, the executive director at the Helsinki Metropolitan Area Reuse Center for more than 30 years now. 
um, you first studied environmental sciences at the University of Helsinki and now you're a member of the advisory board of our project you have been for the last three years and I'm really looking forward to hearing your presentation uh, which will give us some insights on your 30 year long experience, know-how and expertise in the field of reuse. So Juha, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So it's so uh, short time, I'm uh, not even trying to tell everything about uh, I, I know and what we are running in. Uh, in but you can list. take 10 minutes. Yeah, no yeah. 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 okay, yeah. So uh, first I have some uh, background figures and then uh, some uh, uh, highlights or, or what I want to like to tell you. Uh, this is a, a map of uh, the area uh, we are operating. Uh, we have uh, nine stores and a web shop in, in a Helsinki metropolitan area. Uh, so the area is pretty much covered by our, our uh, st uh, stores. And uh, this is a picture of the newest one that's in, in uh, uh, Vanta, uh, which just opened this in, in January. And, and this is smallest earth one, uh, just like this. Uh, they are just uh, like uh, uh, secondhand uh, shops, and the biggest one are real reuse centers with uh, with uh, all kind of uh, different workshops and and so on. And uh, we have uh, uh, lots of uh, or many different repair workshops, and uh, we are repairing uh, electronics, uh, home appliances, IT, and, and bikes. And uh, uh, so just to give the second life for the for the items. And for example, the bikes uh, uh, we are fixing uh, uh, over two thousand bikes per year uh, for re reuse. And uh, this is a chart of the material flow. Uh, we uh, took in about uh, six uh, million kilograms of different uh, things and materials uh, uh, last year. And uh, this is uh, how uh, they went out as uh, percentages and uh, uh, over 60% uh, percent, uh, we could put uh, in the reuse and uh, a little bit less than uh, 30 percent to recycle recycling and then uh, about 10 percent uh, to energy recover and another diagram about our finance uh, this is how we finance our, our uh, operate uh, uh, operations uh, the total finance was uh, our financing was uh, around uh, uh, 15 a million euros last year and two-thirds uh, came from our own turnover uh, basic uh, or may basically from our uh, shops and uh, a little bit from uh, uh, selling some services also and uh, almost all, all the uh, rest uh, came from uh, from the cities and the government uh, subsidies for weights and then I, I uh, want to show some uh, examples of what we are doing uh, in, in three uh, different parts. Uh, one is collection, uh, second is marketing and, and business models, and uh, last one, training and education. So about uh, collecting, uh, this is something uh, kind of special we haven't seen uh, anywhere else. Uh, we only have built one of these, but it's, it's a collecting system for breakable goods. And uh, we are cooperate with the shopping mall uh, device manufacturer and uh, operator, uh, and of course us uh, reuse center. It costs us uh, more than than uh, uh, just taking the donations straight from the customers to our reuse centers. But uh, uh, we think this is a good service for the people, and it it makes them easier to donate uh, the things for us. And uh, uh, on the left side, this is for textiles, just the ordinary. Uh, thing to, to uh, donate them, but the, the uh, kind of the invention is the, the uh, uh, operating uh, or the machine for the fragile things. It's the uh, same kind of uh, a little places as, as uh, there are in uh, uh, airports and uh, people can put the fragile things there. And, and uh, this is the picture from the backside that uh, you don't have to pack them. It's, it's really convenient for the customers or for the, for, for the people. And the other one is uh, uh, we are uh, partners with the nationwide uh, moving company. So uh, people, when they move and they have some extra stuff, uh, they can put them uh, aside in different uh, color 
boxes and, and bags and they they are collected by us so they they are going to spread to re, uh, reuse and the last one of collection uh, this is the uh, cooperating with the uh, uh, throwing uh, flowers so there's a, a big uh, uh, wholesale company and uh, uh, they used to put uh, all the uh, extra flowers to bio waste but uh, now uh, they uh, give them to us and, and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, distribute, uh, distribute those to, to uh, people and uh, we have lots of happy customers to get uh, first flowers. Okay, and second part, uh, making second hand cool, different ways and business models. Uh, this is uh, one thing uh, we haven't seen many in, in many, many places, maybe in Ireland, uh, there was something similar. Uh, this is uh, our own ecological handicraft thing and uh, we can, almost everything that is, it's not reusable, uh, we can still use it as a, as a material for handicraft and it's uh, it was also this uh, uh, um, service was uh, picked uh, by Citra as uh, one of the most interesting uh, companies in, in uh, circular economy in Finland and it was this uh, service and uh, as I said any items that cannot be resolved can be repurposed as, as a craft material and uh, this is a, a picture of uh, one of our stores so we have this kind of departments there in, in our store where we are selling the, the uh, material and uh, also we have like a free ho uh, wholesale uh, we give the craft materials to, to uh, 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 free of uh, charge to NGOs and daycare centers and schools and we have uh, program uh, for parties like birthday parties and, and uh, also for companies they, they uh, have their uh, well-being days or events uh, and these are some examples like uh, from a from a bank uh, company they uh, they they came and make made the, these uh, hobby horses and and uh, then they these were donated to Jesus children's uh, hospital and also uh, some people from our Ministry of Education made some nice books. And uh, we are not doing uh, all that by uh, ourselves. Uh, we are also cooperating, uh, for example, uh, prisoners, uh, they, they can uh, do some of the job in manufacture and packaging. And uh, another one uh, is uh, Plan uh, B, that's our own brand. Uh, we kind of uh, turn quality reuse fabrics into upcycled uh, clothing and accessories, furniture and furnishing. And also like uh, we give uh, items for free of charge and uh, in our uh, stores, uh, the, the uh, departments for, for the free items, uh, they are Quite small. Only one percent of, of the, uh, the the uh, like the area, but uh, uh, almost like uh, twenty percent uh, by volume and, and uh, by item by by the the quantity. Almost like uh, thirty percent we are give up for free. And what we have found that it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't uh, we we don't lose uh, in, in sales. That uh, the more we are uh, sharing. Uh, 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 items are free of charge, the better we are selling. So these are not like competing with each other. And lastly, some uh, some uh, slides about training and awareness raising. Uh, as we want to uh, make uh, our secondhand stores that they are uh, not stores, just uh, uh, secondhand stores, but uh, center of a sustainable lifestyle. Uh, I think that's like a smart reuse park basically the same idea and uh, uh, we have made our our stores uh, kind of uh, uh, learning environments for, for uh, children also and uh, then we have this uh, in in our uh, stores we have uh, this uh, quality wardrobes 
uh, in, in three big uh, stores. Uh, we are telling the people what kind of things they should look at when they are buying clothes. So that because we all, all know that uh, uh, low quality clothes are really difficult to put in reuse. And this is the what it looks like in, in our uh, store there. Wardrobe itself. And uh, then we have this uh, calculator of, of uh, saved resources. And uh, all the customers, when they, they come to us uh, in each receipt, cash receipt, uh, uh, they are giving the estimate how much uh, they saved uh, uh, the natural resources when they purchased that thing. And that's compared uh, if that uh, thing would be replaced uh, uh, by a purchase of a new item. And last uh, last year, uh, like the total amount of uh, was only almost uh, fifty four thousand tons of of uh, uh, saved uh, natural resources. One minute you have. Okay. Uh, and then we have a vocational uh, training. Uh, we have uh, done that for a couple of years because there have been some uh, uh, changes in the, the school system in, in Finland and now they need places where people can practice uh, uh, while they're studying and uh, we are doing uh, cooperating with the uh, schools with, uh, in, in this area. And the uh, last thing is the environmental education. We have done that a lot because we think that's a really important uh, part, not just to to uh, selling the reuse stuff, but also sharing the information and, and uh, raising the uh, awareness uh, among the people. And uh, some figures uh, of, of that uh, last year, we, we reached, reached uh, uh, around uh, 65,000 people uh, were trained uh, by our staff. And uh, then uh, last uh, picture, this is what we are, are uh, you no know, focusing next is is uh, to combine like the the uh, waste station services and reuse service uh, and uh, uh, I think that was uh, something uh, we heard uh, uh, the the new uh, uh, reuse park in Germany what they are doing and that's what we are excited about it in in Finland uh, we haven't we we don't have uh, those kind of things uh, here yet but uh, we are working on that and uh, uh, one of uh, part of that is uh, is a project it's another uh, eu uh, uh, inter uh, project uh, super uh, uh, project uh, and uh, here's a link for that uh, uh, we don't have lots of uh, uh, material in in english but i I advise you to read this because it's it tells you quite a lot of, of the uh, recycling and reuse uh, situation in Finland. So it's a good uh, document for that. And then uh, other point I want to uh, make is is uh, we have developed a web store and other online services uh, really fast uh, during this COVID uh, time, and and that's uh, something maybe if you have to. Uh, or want to find something positive of, of these times. It's it's an uh, opportunity to to uh, take a huge leaps uh, in in an area like this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, you have. Uh, I think it's amazing. It was very interesting uh, to to listen to you, and I'm I'm looking forward then um, to the plenary discussion. Uh, where I think we will dive a little bit into where you see the parallels to the SRPs developed in our project and also dive into a bit more into the um, COVID uh, question um, and um, the um, consequences for, for all of us and to reuse actors. But next, um, coming next, um, we will jump to to the island of Ireland and I mm -hmm. ask Laura to start sharing her screen uh, while I'm introducing you. Laura is an environmental scientist with the background in climate policy, renewable energy and sustainable transport. 
Uh, in your current role, um, Laura works um, on research regarding reuse and circular practices in Ireland, and she also supports the implementation of circular business models through the Rediscovery Center Circular Economy Academy Mentoring Program. That's a long sentence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you also work on national and international environmental policy and the sustainable development goals. Laura, looking forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, we don't call ourselves, the rediscovery doesn't call themselves um, a smart reuse park, but I think we would actually tick quite a few of the boxes. And I, I'll just give you a bit of an overview of the different parts of the work that we do, because we do have quite a varied uh, and diverse background of work. Um, and just to start, maybe where we come from, we are an NGO. But we started off um, as a regeneration project. So we're based in Ballymun, which is a suburb of Dublin um, in Ireland. And this is the way Ballymun looked in the late 1990s. It, was, it wasn't quite, slighter, unfortunately, still is uh, quite a uh, disadvantaged neighborhood. There was a lot of concrete, very little green area. The flats that you can see there, the towers didn't have any waste separation. People wouldn't have to pay for their. Um, for the waste or their energy, their electricity, because it was social housing. So when the government and the city council decided in the late 1990s that they wanted to regenerate the area, um, one thing that the citizens actually pointed out themselves was that they didn't just want social and economic regeneration, they also wanted environmental regeneration. And uh, this is where the Rediscovery Center was born, pointing out to the need to bring in the, the three pillars of sustainable development, so environmental, social, and economic. And just to give you a very brief overview of the journey that we've had. So since the decision to actually start the regeneration um, and the setup of the Rediscovery Center, we have started in 2004 um, to set up the Rediscovery Center. In 2005, we started with education and that was very much surrounding the whole, how do you separate your waste? How do you, you know, keep your bills lower? Just because people moved from the flats into new built houses, but they wouldn't have known how to use any of the services that people might normally maybe know how to use. And then the next step was rediscover furniture. And that was very um, organic in its growth because we realized that all the flats, all the apartments that were being emptied obviously had furniture that was being thrown out. So in order to not have that go to waste, Rediscover Furniture was set up to repair and restore this furniture. And you can see there's a, a whole lot more in our uh, development up until now with us becoming the Irish Center for the Circular Economy in 2017. But I'll take you through the different parts of our work. Just to mention, um, we are an NGO and around half of, uh, of our uh, income is through the through partnership with the Irish Environmental Protection Agency. And we also receive support from the, the Irish Department for Communications, Climate Action and Environment, as well as from Dublin City Council, still through the regeneration. Where we are at the moment is uh, in, in 2019. I think our 2020 figures will obviously be a bit different because of COVID. But yearly, we have around 20 tons of material that we repair or reuse so that we avoid uh, ending up in landfill that we give a new life to. We have over 10,000 participants in our educational workshops every year. We have approximately 70 trainees that's in our social enterprise reuse workshops in our education unit, but also in our visitor center, which I'll talk about in a bit. And we're quite proud of approximately 87, sometimes over 90% of these trainees going on to work or education because they oftentimes come from a disadvantaged background. They might have never had any jobs before. They might have never had any formal training or education before. So it's very important for us to further the social component of people going on after they've been working with us. Um, one of our four reuse social enterprises is Rediscover Fashion. Rediscover Fashion was set up in 2008 and it's very much about reusing um, original item fabrics that we have been donated by companies in, our, in this case for Rediscover Fashion, um, turning them into clothing and homeware. And as with all the other social enterprises, Rediscover Fashion has trainees on site that learn how to reuse fabric, how to sew, how to design, how to draw patterns and the like. Um, and we also have public courses. So for Rediscover Fashion, we'd have uh, 
public courses around how to repair your own items, how to mend your clothes, but also how to create a, a small capsule wardrobe. So how to minimize your style, just a, a range of things to promote sustainable living. We've rediscovered paint, which was set up in 2007 and rediscover paint takes waste paint from local um, civic amenity sites. So we work with three local councils that have reuse areas set aside for us and we come and collect water-based paint that is still good to use. It doesn't take a lot to reuse the paint. It's actually quite the technically simple process. You just need to clean it. Um, well, make sure it's still good, <laughs> then clean it and remix it, which is brilliantly easy and something that we are trying to promote across the island of Ireland because there is a lot of waste paint that isn't currently being reused. Then we have Rediscover Cycling, which is number three of our four social enterprises. And uh, here we also source our materials, our bicycles, from the civic amenity sites, from the recycling centers. Um, and we repair them, we restore them. If they're unrepairable, either we don't take them or if we need stock of, say, wheels or something, we take these specific parts and use them for the creation of new bikes. And um, Rediscover Cycling also gives quite a few courses in, uh, for, the, for the public to show how to repair your bike because that's something that's badly needed, especially with uh, bike tires. Um, we find that the, the people that work, the trainees that work with Rediscover Cycling are actually getting uh, jobs very easily nowadays because Dublin has had a huge cycling boom. So we're, we're delighted that people oftentimes when they work with us in Rediscover Cycling especially have an easy time finding a job as a bicycle mechanic afterwards. Um, our fourth social enterprise that reuses items then is Rediscover Furniture. And here we are lucky enough to have uh, Jur um, working with us. Jur is a former antiques restorer by trade and he has a lot of experience on how to restore antiques. So we don't only um, create new items, produce new items from donations, but we also work with a lot of commission work. So we would take pieces that mean a lot to to the owners and restore them and upholster them and then give them back. So we have a lot of repair work in furniture as well. Then obviously education was the first part that the Rediscovery Center started with. Our education is very active. Uh, we have, as I said, over 10,000 children, but also adults going through it every year. And in 2020, we are going, we're <laughs> building on going national. We were going to go national this year, but obviously COVID uh, kind of interrupted that. And what that means for us is that we'd be delivering our workshops all over the country. So we'd have uh, facilitators delivering our over 60 different workshops from biodiversity over, you know, geology, space, um, water and waste all over the country. And hopefully that will happen either later this year or at the, at the start of next year. Then we also have a visitor center. And the interesting thing about the building that we're in is that it's a, a former boiler house, a former industrial boiler house. And through the EU Life uh, project, Wiser Life, we actually reused this space. So it's Wiser stands for working with industrial spaces to exemplify reuse. And it really is about trying to show that we don't have to take down a building and reconstruct it. We can actually keep all the structures that we don't need to remove and we can reuse them. So it was really about building an exemplary uh, best practice item of how, to, how you can have circular construction. And that's why we currently give tours of the building, not of, at the moment it's virtual tours, but usually we give in-person tours. Um, we also have quite a few green walls, solar panel installations. We have our own closed water circuit where we clean our water on site. So there's quite a few things that we'd uh, show on our tours. And we also have an eco store on site where we sell all the items produced in the workshops, as well as around 40 other Irish designers that sign up to the same sustainability ideals. And we have a, a circular cafe that's working on being as circular as possible. So sourcing the, the food from the garden that we have and other community gardens and trying to avoid all food waste as much as possible. All of this is really to encourage people to think about circular economy, to think about sustainable living. We have a lot of conferences and uh, public events. As much as we can right now, we've very much switched to <laughs> webinars and uh, online meetings that aren't quite as exciting. But uh, we try to get people interested 
um, in a circular lifestyle, but also to normalize it so that it's, you know, reuse and, and secondhand and repair are something that people think is normal. One um, minute, Laura. Yeah, thanks. I'm almost done. So <laughs> we're also working on research and policy. And you can see the, the few different steps of the building on the top. So where it started and where it went. Um, and yeah, we do policy analysis specifically on circular economy policy, unsurprisingly. This is the, the long sentence Maria introduced earlier. So our Circular Economy Academy is a mentoring program that we have started in 2019. And we help other social enterprises and community groups in Ireland to um, adopt circular business models. So some of them would be interested in uh, copying the Rediscover paint or furniture um, products that we have, but some have very different um, circular business ideas and we support them in, in their setup. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Laura. Uh, thanks for, for the uh, very uh, yeah, interesting insights. I think you have great uh, examples uh, set up there in Ireland. And I, I do agree with the point you brought up that uh, the virtual booths and the webinars uh, are less mm -hmm. exciting when it comes to reuse and repair, because I think that's the, the, the charming point of really putting uh, yeah, hence on, on a practical action and then getting a physical result. Yeah, with reuse and, and um, upcycling and everything. I have noted down some questions in the back of my mind later in the Q&A session for you. Uh, but I uh, would go on uh, looking at the time and also um, the agenda uh, with our plenary discussion. And I hope that you can see my screen. Just a short feedback from somebody in the audience, but I think it should be worth yes, it. Yes, we see it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Thank you. Uh, coming to the, the last big point of today's webinar, um, it's the, the plenary discussion on the topic of COVID-19 impact and other current challenges on the reuse market. This plenary discussion will be moderated by Bertolt Schleich, who has been somehow already introduced by, by Christian in the beginning, but to say a few words, Bertolt is the Managing Director of the Waste Prevention Association in Graz in Austria. He has been supporting our projects from the very beginning as a thematic um, advisor and reuse expert during the last three years and also already before that. And uh, as it was mentioned before, he has been part of the Austrian waste prevention uh, actions and, and especially reuse actions from the first minute. And Bertel, we're very happy that you're with us and that you will moderate this interesting plenary discussion. So um, I hope you can unmute yourself and you're with me. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for this nice introduction. Also to Christian, it's a very charming in introduction, so I'm very proud of it uh, to hear it. So, and um, we have uh, th uh, three uh, speakers for this uh, plenary discussion. Um, it um, already uh, gave a presentation, Juha uh, Letkoya from uh, Fieritis Keskos the Helsinki Metropolitan Area Reuse Center Limited. Uh, next week, we would have uh, had a meeting in Helsinki with our European umbrella organization, Reuse, but um, due to the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, it will be held um, uh, remote. So um, the second uh, expert uh, is uh, Siri Carlsen Bellica from the city of uh, Oslo. Uh, she is um, engaged in the circular economy and she is local coordinator for the Urbex Network Resource for Cities. Uh, Siri is, uh, was um, participating uh, several uh, multi-stakeholder forums. Uh, Siri, welcome uh, to this discussion. Thank you. Okay, and our third uh, speaker, uh, reuse expert, is Zala Stroin from uh, the city of Ljubljana. She's an environmental uh, protection expert, 
and uh, since uh, 2018, she has been working as a circular economy manager for the city of Ljubljana. Hello, Zala, welcome uh, to this uh, discussion. Hello, and thank you for having me. Okay, uh, we have prepared uh, some uh, questions uh, for this um, um, uh, discussion. Uh, I would like to start uh, with um, uh, Siri, um, if you agree. Uh, and uh, we would like to ask you, what do you think uh, of the smart reuse park uh, approach and the presented re uh, reuse cases? Well, I think, uh, first of all, congratulations with a really interesting uh, webinar, even though it's online. And uh, I think it's really interesting to see how uh, all of these types of centers that you have presented and also uh, the ones that uh, came later in the presentation are um, um, represented uh, or are things that we are also working on within the city of Oslo and that we see that there are types of initiatives that this uh, are popping up all over European cities but you have managed to kind of uh, uh, find a way to structure uh, the content a bit and it's uh, it's very inspiring to see from a city perspective that you include a lot of them uh, and the elements of a smart reuse park that are important for us as a, a city authority and a waste management authority so uh, it's been very interesting to follow the both the project and also the presentation to see uh, the different approaches that you can have so i'm i'm very, very yeah i'm very um uh, happy to see uh the way that this has been transformed into something practical okay thank you uh <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I would like to ask the same question to Zala, as she is an important uh, stakeholder for our Slovenian uh, partners who set up uh, already a brilliant uh, reuse network. Zala, what do you think uh, about the reuse park approach? Well, I, I also agree with uh, Siri. Uh, this is a very interesting project, and uh, I'm very grateful, uh, you know, to cooperate. Uh, with Marinka Vogue, uh, which is leading uh, or managing the um, reuse park in, in Ljubljana. We really have a very good uh, cooperation. And I think on this reuse topic, you know, it's really important that everyone is involved. And if you have uh, so many different stakeholders, then you really have to find different approaches if you want to, you know, um, to get everyone aboard. Um, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to be with you the, um, the whole session, but, uh, you know, from the last two presentations, I see that, you know, uh, there are so many good ideas and, you know, uh, what in Ljubljana we have learned now from the uh, COVID crisis as well is uh, that the do-it-yourself culture is sparkling. And uh, I think that, that reuse centers are a very important um, um, points where, where people uh, can uh, learn a lot of things, uh, be educated, uh, cooperate, uh, gain new knowledge. Uh, so I, I, I'm really in favor of uh, review centers. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, uh, impression. Um, Juha, um, the last uh, uh, months were very difficult. How did you um, manage uh, these impacts uh, from the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, for your organization? Uh, it was a really uh, challenging time for us, uh, or it has been. Uh, uh, we had to uh, uh, close down all our reuse uh, uh, centers and, uh, of course, uh, we lost almost all the income, so uh, and and uh, it lasted like five years, uh, five weeks or something like that. But uh, gradually, during the May, we we could uh, reopen uh, uh, all our uh, reuse centers. The last ones, the smallest one, we uh, just opened last Friday, and uh, and uh, since uh, 
they are not no uh, strict uh, strict uh, 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 you know rules uh, for people for not going uh, out uh, on, and uh, visit uh, reuse uh, centers. Uh, we have uh, had uh, uh, even more customers than what we expected when we uh, opened, but uh, still. Uh, it has been a tough time and uh, uh, I'm not sure how we're going to manage because uh, uh, the, the financial support that uh, uh, the, like the Finnish government, uh, they have, they have uh, and I, I, I expect that in, in every European country uh, it has been the same that the governments, uh, they have put quite a lot of money to, to support the, the business uh, to not to uh, fall down. but. Um, but uh, so far, we haven't got any any uh, subsidies uh, for this situation. But uh, uh, well, it seems that we can survive. But <laughs> but it has been uh, quite a challenging time. Yes, I've seen uh, you have a you have a huge uh, income from your reuse store. Uh, I've seen in your presentation. So I'm sure that you will <laughs> survive, and hopefully. We can uh, visit uh, this really good practice uh, in future, and I can recommend to anybody else uh, to do this. To do the same, it's um, it's always difficult to imagine um, during a presentation than to have seen it uh, with your own eyes. Uh, so hopefully, we'll see the, uh, this year. Uh, with the Subtract project, uh, we defined you as a good practice. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, um, I, I hope uh, that we can, can manage this, this uh, journey uh, to Helsinki. Um, but what, what uh, do you think are the, the, the long-term challenges for the reuse market um, deriving from this uh, crisis? Um, Will there be any changes in the future? Do you expect changes? Or do you think everything will go on as it went on in the past? Uh, well, I don't think that, because uh, people, uh, it, uh, or at least it seems to me that people, they have used to, you know, different uh, uh, types of, of uh, action and uh, like, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't think that pe uh, uh, even uh, that like like the new normal of of uh, uh, having meetings would be different uh, than before. That, that these uh, online meetings would be quite uh, common even even uh, after the the COVID uh, 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 epidemic uh, uh, passed. And uh, and also uh, as we have seen the the huge uh, grow in in uh, online selling. Uh, so that's something uh, it will stay even in in a second hand uh, market i i believe and uh luckily we had like uh, we didn't uh, start from the uh, uh, zero we had an online store but uh, it it wasn't that big and and uh, the uh like the volumes there were were quite uh, uh small compared to all our other uh, operators uh, operatings but uh but uh, now, since we had to close down all the other stores, uh, we we had uh, uh, lots of people and energy to put on our online store. And and uh, in uh, like during uh, let's say one month, we we almost uh, tenfolded it uh, compared to the normal situation. And, and that's what uh, we are going to keep it in in that higher level after this, because. Uh, it's it's also kind of uh, if something we, because we never know now that uh, 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 this uh, would have been the, the you know the last time that something like this happened. Uh, of course, uh, 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 maybe governments and and uh, companies and people uh, in general they would uh, be more uh, prepared for for situations like this. But still, uh, uh, if something even uh, uh remote similar than this happens uh in the future it's it's a good to have uh different channels like multi channels uh, or omni channel uh, uh ways to to uh put your uh reusable goods uh, on the market 
Okay, so you you could read, you can recommend it to to other reuse initiatives to do the same, to develop uh, this this online source. Oh, of of course, of course, and uh, that's uh, like uh, uh, I think it, it was in Austria, like they they emphasize uh, or, or in in that presentation uh, about the mobile and and digital uh, things and. And that's that's uh, and what we have found out that uh, in in our normal stores that uh, it's uh, well a little bit tricky to get uh, young people to visit there, but uh, that's one way to to use the social media media and and uh, you know mobile phones and all kind of things or digital gadgets to to <laughs> to to uh, get the uh, younger generations to. Uh, learn to use the service. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Juha. So uh, probably we can generate a new project all together for the <laughs> next <laughs> a structural fund period um, uh, dealing with uh, this subject, uh, creating online stores or whatever to, to, to give uh, more power uh, to this uh, new media um, and, and sales, online sales. So probably um, this could work. But uh, Zala, I, w I want to ask you, as you are... Uh -huh. Yes, the uh, same question. Economy manager, do you think that... Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's nearly the same question. Do you think uh, that this COVID crisis will uh, have uh, any impact uh, on, on real changes towards uh, circular economy? Or do you think uh, that... Uh, um, fuel will be expensive again and everything works uh, like in the past. Um. Um, well, I think that it's not uh, only up to COVID-19, but in general, you know, we, we, we have, the fact is that we have limited resources, so we have to change our habits uh, with or without the, uh, the COVID. So I think that uh, reuse, reuse centers, online shopping, of course, uh, it's a great opportunity. And I would, of course, uh, encourage, uh, you know, especially maybe SMEs uh, to do it. Uh, but from the city point of view, I think that uh, in Ljubljana, uh, we are really working on uh, changing our mindset you know we think that we the decision makers have to be the role model for our citizens if we will not uh, learn how uh, buy uh, and make decisions differently then the people uh, will not follow so in uh, within the for example in our city uh, administration we are uh, already setting up in kind uh, catalog of, of uh, different locally produced uh, gadgets um, uh, made of no no uh, no plastic and so on. And we are uh, this year we are introducing a new pilot, uh, setting up uh, exchange sh uh, shelves within the um, offices. So it is meant for the employees only. So that uh, you know, if you have something that is still useful and you don't want to throw it away. You will just bring it to your office, leave it on the shelf, and somebody else can uh, take it. So, you know, we are really um, educating all the employees uh, of this importance of, of uh, reuse. Uh, we are also starting uh, a, a new um, project of um, reusing the one of uh, office equipment. Uh, this, this also has a, a huge potential. And also uh, a very fresh new uh, news that uh, we will try to uh, repurpose uh, uh, the uniforms of our um, city police into different educational uh, gadgets as well. So uh, we as the city administration are trying to purchase um, uh, reused, recycled materials, you know, uh, I think that this is very important that the city administration, that the decision makers are, are aware of this situ uh, situation and are uh, uh, role model. Uh, and this, we are also going, all this um, project that I have uh, listed uh, will, be, will be carried out uh, uh, with in, in cooperation with uh, our reuse center. 
And the second uh, part that we are, uh, work, we are working on, and it is also very important, is of course working with our citizens. So uh, we have just introduced um, a circular tip, um, a, a, new, um, a new topic into our local magazine, uh, which is distributed to all uh, city households. Uh, we have more than 110,000 of them. Uh, and in these uh, circular tips, uh, we are uh, trying to encourage them to reuse, uh, remake um, uh, different uh, things like um, making, uh, making bags out of worn out uh, curtains uh, and so on. So um, as I already have mentioned, we have now seen that uh, we have now seen that uh, do-it-yourself culture is uh, really sparkling. So we should really follow this wave and just um, um, promote this kind of uh, activities uh, also as, uh, as a city. Okay, thank you uh, very much. This uh, green public procurement uh, process to in, in include the um, reuse and also probably the, the, the social uh, enterprises um, to provide uh, reuse goods. Uh, this is very important. So a lot of cities can learn from the city of Ljubljana. Even a very beautiful uh, city, you should visit it. Um, the most beautiful city in the world. You know, these are the words of our mayor. <laughs> okay, uh, don't trust the mayors. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 trust them and come. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just visit it. So uh, I would like uh, to, to have a final question also to Siri uh, from Oslo. Uh, as Norway is not a member of the European Union, probably we have a different approach uh, in dealing with a circular economy. Uh, Siri, are there any differences and, and uh, what do you think? Uh, what will be the future after this crisis? Uh, well, um, first of all, with the work on circular economy, at least the city of Oslo and also the Norwegian authorities, we try, we follow the, 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 the work that the European Commission and the European Union have put down in the circular economy uh, action plans that have been put forward for the past years. So uh, it's still uh, very much a topic that is prioritized also uh, in Norway. And the city of Oslo has been uh, in, involved in the coordination of the EU Urban Agenda Partnership on Circular Economy. So we have, uh, for the past three years, uh, been in a partnership with several European cities and also member states and the European Commission to develop an action plan for cities on how we can help uh, city administrations to turn uh, their cities uh, into a more circular path. And so uh, based on that involvement, um, or also is quite internationally engaged in these types of environmental topics. So we are now starting our work to make a holistic strategy for the city on circular economy, where uh, also these types of reuse centers and and, and um, the, the, the role of the social economy and, and sharing economy also will be taken into that uh, strategy. And we also share the same approach as Ljubljana with also including these types of um, uh, perspectives into our public procurement strategies. We do work a lot on this and I definitely think that uh, as cities we see that we have very limited access to resources and that there is a lot of resources coming in and out of our cities which uh, most of the time is seen as a logistical challenge but there is also a lot of a business opportunity and job opportunities in these um, perspective and so uh, one of the things I can I think we can take out of the corona and COVID-19 situation is that it will uh, as I guess a lot of European cities has uh, in, and now um, experienced that the in unemployment rates are increasing. This can be the opportunity to really uh, promote the social aspects of these smart reuse parks and to uh, actively work on a holistic strategy to create the green uh, jobs uh, to, to ensure that this uh, 
pandemic actually lead to a, a, a shift in uh, the way we manage our cities as well. Okay, Siri, uh, thank you very much for these aspects and hopefully uh, we can work together in the future for any uh, following up project. A very mm. interesting uh, things and uh, I think uh, you also believe that Oslo is the most beautiful city. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Maria. I have a yep. question. How many time yep. do we have left? Uh, so uh, uh, we should uh, give the floor also to some participants if there is a yeah. possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also uh, go now to the the slide with the question from the audience, and we have received a few actually from uh, from the audience. Some of them we have tried to answer already with the with the chat function. Um, but for example, I will just read out, I don't know if you see here my chat window now on the screen that I share, but Sepp Eisenriegler from Austria, he asked, I wonder why nobody from the panelists has mentioned EU regulatory policy, which makes me optimistic, also concerning reuse. The EU Green Deal, the yeah, action plan and um, diverse final standards. Could you tell us your views on future EU regulatory policy? That's directly um, addressed to the um, to the um, members of the plenary discussion. So, um, yes, I would put that into the round if it's okay. okay. Maybe I can go first. So uh, yes, we have um, we have uh, this legislation on the European um, uh, level. Um, now the new uh, circular economy action, uh, action plan has come out. It's not very um, precise. Uh, we don't, it doesn't include a lot of targets. Uh, and uh, you know, within the Eurostis, I'm not if you are familiar with this network, but it's a network of all uh, major uh, European cities, and we are already, uh, you know, um, working on on. Uh, giving um, uh, or, or on commenting um, uh, the new action plan, and I think that uh, the reuse uh, challenge will uh, issue will also be um, included. But uh, based on the, um, uh, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, what is uh, one of the shortcomings of this um, action plans on the European uh, level? Uh, it is mostly focused on um, producers and some on the citizens, uh, but not uh, also on the decision, make, uh, decision makers. So what can we uh, as a public sector, our public administration uh, can do uh, to promote or introduce uh, the principles of circular economy uh, into our uh, working processes. So this will also be uh, one of the topics that uh, we will include in our uh, uh, comments. Uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes, but you know, um, at the end it's uh, down to the city um, and city plans um, how, how much this, uh, not just circular, but sustainable uh, ideas are incorporated in, in the um, visions and plans. So uh, as for Ljubljana, I can say that uh, we have already made a vision uh, Ljubljana 2025 in 2007 and sustainable development was one of the three strategic goals. Uh, and based on this vision, we have already carried out more than 2,200 um, uh, projects and uh, we were, as you probably know, the European uh, Green Capital in 2016 and in uh, 2014 we were the first European capital uh, to be part of the Zero Waste Network. So um, waste prevention, uh, reuse, um, recycling is uh, a priority uh, for Diana. Okay, thank you. Uh, an answer from uh, Siri or from Juha to the questions from Sepp Eisenregler. I just uh, want to yeah, support or add to the, the question on the waste regulatory framework that um, this has been a challenge that we have tried to address both, as Salah mentioned, in the Eurocities uh, work that also is also involved on, on waste and 
and also through the Urban Agenda Partnership on Circular Economy, we had one specific action on how we could uh, change the regulatory framework from a waste uh, framework to more resource management framework. So the partnership has developed a booklet that we just released today actually on uh, the partnership's approach to uh, the future of waste legislation. Um, I can share this with you later. And also this is one of the, the challenges that we've taken forward also into the Urbex action planning network that also is part of called Resourceful Cities, that we will try to, in our work with uh, developing um, types of reuse uh, uh, services, also identify where we face challenges when it comes to the waste framework directive and also uh, other types of um, issues. So uh, it's definitely something that we are aware of, but we also, uh, as cities, have managed to find some local approaches to uh, make sure that we are within the framework, but also can uh, have reuse activities and, and work uh, around some of the barriers that are uh, there. Okay, th uh, thank you very much, Siri. Um, uh, the cities in, in Europe, uh, they can have a, a really big impact on, on um, developing this circular economy if we have the political decision uh, from the political uh, players. It, it's not so easy sometimes, but due to this climate change, it will become very hot in our cities. So. Uh, hopefully things will uh, go as fast as with the pandemic uh, of COVID-19, also with the climate change, the, the political decisions. So uh, you have, do you have an, an final um, aspects uh, to the questions from, from Seb? Uh, well, uh, as I'm uh, re representing uh, a local operator, I'm uh, not uh, so uh, deep involved with the, the legislative uh, Aspects, but uh, but uh, uh, right uh, just now uh, the the uh, uh, Finnish uh, government uh, they they uh, made the proposition of of the national uh, waste law in Finland the new law and uh, uh, well I think uh, from the uh, historical uh, uh, reasons uh, because there have been lots of uh, discussions and fights between the uh, about the uh, waste uh, transport. Uh, between the the public sector and the private uh, waste uh, uh, management companies, and uh, so that's the main uh, issue in in this uh, let's say this round of of uh, the the legislation. So they uh, the the new law it doesn't uh, tell a whole lot about uh, uh, about the reuse and and uh, how it's it uh, should be. You know, or put in a, a perspective, but uh, but I, I I share the view that uh, there are some promising promising uh, uh, headlines in in a, in a European level, but uh, it uh, it uh, seems to me that it's uh, not going to happen right now in Finland. But uh, but what I heard that uh, they are going to make a next uh, round of of changes in, in that law, maybe in the you know end of this year or beginning of next year so hopefully in in that uh, uh, that time uh, there would be some uh, uh, changes in, in in this this way also thank you Juha. i think uh, uh, there will be changes because uh, they have such a wonderful uh, good practice like fieritis cascos <laughs> so hopefully things uh, will go uh, faster um, so I, I would like to thank our reuse experts for this group. Maria, do we have any other questions or do we, do we have time to answer another one or um, shall we close? The I think we're, we're nearly closing. It's just, um, uh, I saw that Siri already. Um, thanks Siri for, for sharing the booklet with us. Thanks to Andrea for your lovely comment from Research Bundland Aust Austria. I shortly want to answer here the, um, the question from uh, Rike of, uh, from Denmark, Aalborg University. She asked, how did you make the cut between reuse as a prevention initiative versus uh, reuse as a preparation for reuse activity inside our project? Just a short um, answer. 
we will come back to that uh, also on Thursday, um, we kind of divided it, reuse for prevention into awareness raising activities and campaigns, education and trainings that we performed and um, reuse activities in terms of preparation for reuse, reuse were more the practical um, implementation of our pilots, where the, for example, at the recycling center, uh, you have then to, um, um, as a report that the amounts of the waste prepared for, re for reuse and recycling with a certain European waste uh, code uh, in the different national reporting tools. So that's, that's a first uh, quick answer to that, but we can, you can come back uh, to me uh, for a more detailed answer. And I think there's only one question that I would uh, shortly like uh, to put into the round or more to you, Bertel, because Markus Meisner from, from Austria, he asked, is there a region where the reuse deficit is covered by public waste management fees? And if so, what were the core arguments to convince the community to accept that? So um, I think that's a question if in our consortium, is there a country where uh, the, the financial effort uh, for reuse activities is covered already with a fixed fee uh, of public waste management fee? Um, I hope I understood it right, Marcus. Um, yeah, um, I can say that uh, this is a very important question because of the preparation for reuse is part of uh, the whole uh, waste management. Uh, and therefore, uh, it's, um, it's logic that the measures um, which uh, make or uh, which, which have costs must be included into this waste management fee. And as I guess, uh, CAC, CAC is a very important um, example for that because they said uh, as a waste management association, uh, reuse uh, and the preparation for reuse is a legal um, effort and, and the aspect we have to do as a waste management association and therefore uh, even if their costs arise we would invest it so as I spoke uh, the last time with the manager of, of the Zack uh, company in Kempton uh, he said, okay, they want to put uh, more money into this aspect and they will collect it uh, through the, the waste management fee. And this is very important because uh, in Austria we have very often the situation that uh, the, the decision makers, the, the mayors and the managers of the waste management associations very often say, okay, you can uh, uh, do a reuse as much as you want, but uh, it shouldn't cost anything. That's, that's not the point because if you collect bio waste, it costs a lot. And if you do measures for uh, pre uh, pr uh, preparation for reuse, it's uh, also logic uh, that, that the cost should be taken uh, um, or certain costs should be taken uh, from the waste management fee. So um, I think uh, this, this uh, you said this was the last yes. <laughs> question. Yes. Yes. So, yes. I would like to thank uh, our three experts, uh, Juha, Siri uh, and Zala, uh, very, very much for the participation in, in this discussion. And hopefully we will have any future collaboration with, uh, with these uh, uh, members from, from the cities, Ljubljana, Oslo and Helsinki. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for your uh, input and, and have a good day and hopefully we will see you on Thursday again. Maria, it's your time. Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Bertel. Um, I will take one question from the audience, uh, I think from Costa. Uh, to my conclusions, um, he asked whether we identified key differences between the reuse parks among uh, the, um, the project countries. But first let me say that um, this week for our two webinars, we have more than 150 um, people that signed up for the two webinars. Uh, they are coming from more than 25 different countries uh, and from different bodies, from public, private organization, NGOs, research, and so on. And I think this is a very um, great sign on, of the importance uh, and relevance of the topic of reuse and, and circular economy in a, as a, a larger frame. Uh, today we have heard that um, 
we use Meet the home, uh, whether it's within a so-called smart to use park or um, within other physical or virtual sites um, with different um, names. Um, I think what is important is that we saw uh, that um, the stakeholders uh, need a certain um, legal and, and um, a framework that gives them uh, the opportunity and the security uh, that they can be active. Here, the question concerning the differences from the audience before uh, plays a bit into, yes, of course, we have seen also Peter from Hungary already uh, mentioned it. There were big differences uh, based, for example, on the different backgrounds and history of the, of the uh, countries because there um, have been more basis and, and work done before the project, for example, uh, in, in yeah, in, in, in certain project partner countries, for example, Italy in Siena, they uh, can already work on an experience of 30 years in, in reuse. That's a, a different starting point for, for a smart reuse park when setting up a reuse park. There are different legal frameworks, although we all, all at least from, from the participating countries, are members of the EU. Um, we have the circular economy package, but on the national basis, of course, different legal um, premises and uh, also different, therefore, um, financial support and, and subsidy uh, opportunities. So um, there were different starting points for, for the countries involved, uh, but I think it's um, amazing and a great success uh, what has happened during the last few years. And um, Coming back to these frameworks, the different frameworks uh, that, um, um, that we, the stakeholders, are operating in, in the field of reuse, um, it's important that, uh, that we have certain uh, tools and, and um, that supports us uh, when getting active in, in, um, in the field of reuse. And that, this will bring or brings me to the announcement of our second webinar on the 4th of June focusing on reuse activation tools and networking on European level, um, where we will dive more deeper into these um, surrounding settings that are important when uh, for all reuse actors. And this would be the conclusion from my side. Also, um, a warm thank you to all participants, to you, the, the, the audience that has been very um, patient now. We are 20 minutes over our uh, time schedule. Thanks for staying with us so long and thanks again for all the presenters for being with us today and for your uh, yeah, valuable input. And uh, I, I here will say thank you for your attention and participation and hopefully see you on Thursday.